Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron, I hope you're having a great day in Jesus. We're going to look at who is Michael the Archangel. Now, I know officially in Jehovah's Witness theology that Michael is Jesus. I have actually seen in 19th century Seventh day Adventist literature and maybe even from Ellen G. White that they believe that Michael the Archangel was Jesus as well. I don't think your average Seventh day Adventist believes that now, but maybe some still do. But there is a lot of misinformation on who is Michael the Archangel. Now the term Michael is used 15 times in 15 verses in the scripture, but not all of those are referring to Michael the Archangel. So we're going to look at what, who Michael is, and maybe even go into a little bit about what an archangel is as well. So the first time we run into Michael the Archangel that I can find in scripture is Daniel 10.13. And this is an angel talking to Daniel, and it says, But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one in twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. So here we see that in the hierarchy of angels in heaven, not only, you know, we have principalities, dominions, thrones, you have strong angels, mighty angels, but all also one of the one of the chief princes so obviously there's more than one chief prince because it's used in, in plural and Michael is one of them. so this angels fighting with this prince over Persia and Michael comes and says go on to Daniel <laughs> and so like that so then Daniel 12 well, let's go to Daniel 12 to 21 is the next place Michael the Archangel is found in Scripture. And it says, But I will show thee that which is noted in the Scripture of truth, and there is none that holdeth with me in these things but Michael your prince. Now look at this. 1021 of Daniel so one of the coolest scriptures because it shows us that angels have access to Scripture. Because forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. And it was just transported through human instrumentation, but transported perfectly. Holy men of God spake as they were moved or carried along by the Holy Ghost. It was mechanical dictation. Don't you ever doubt it. But And so people that don't believe that, they don't believe in the mind of God that he could have the Bible knowing Luke and Paul and their linguistic tendencies in all of this. They're, they're playing even three-dimensional chess when God is playing, oh, about 50 quadrillionth to the 20 quadrillionth power to the 9 millionth quadrillionth power. He's, like, a lot smarter than us. Okay, so... Um, so the noted in the scripture of truth, and there is none that holdeth with me in these things, but Michael, your prince, your prince. So now we find, so Daniel was a Hebrew. He was Jewish. Michael is your prince. So Michael is a chief prince, and he looks out for the nation of Israel. Then we go to Daniel 12, 1. At, and at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince prince which standeth for the children of thy people so michael's going to stand up in the end time all right and notice he stands for the children of israel and there shall come a time of trouble that's jeremiah what is it 30 verse 7 the time of jacob's trouble such as never was since there was a nation even of that same time and at that time thy people shall be delivered every one that shall be found written in the book that is the book of life all right so that's to my understanding that's pretty much it for michael in the old testament um some of these verses, like if I hit 12, 1, go to verse 2, many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. You know, that's talking about the resurrection in the Old Testament, which weirdly enough, a lot of evangelicals don't believe the resurrection is mentioned in the Old Testament. Obviously it is. But, you know, you might have something concerning Michael surrounding these three passages in Daniel. Okay, Jude verse 9. There's only one chapter in Jude verse 9. Yet Michael the 
archangel. So here we find that he is an archangel. He's a chief prince, archangel, meaning he's strong angel and he's over like a battalion. Some people think there were three archangels, Gabriel, Michael, and Satan and Satan lost and that's why one third of the angels fell and that Gabriel would be the word angel, Michael the warrior angel and Lucifer was the worshiper angel, warrior word worshiper, each pertaining one third of the angels, you know, and that is phenomenal when people teach that behind the pulpit it makes sense there's just a real bad problem with it is it's not in scripture that's peace in scripture that may not be true but brother so and so said it and i could name their names yeah and they said it great with perfect diction and anointing because the gifts and calling of god are without repentance and it may be true but i'm just going to tell you it probably is not true Okay, but you don't understand this person said he preaches camp meetings. Love you. <laughs> so yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, notice he contended, he disputed about the body of Moses. Why? Because Moses was buried in a place they didn't know. And he, Moses, was going to appear with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. And probably again in the book of Revelation as well. So he disputes with the body of Moses, durst or dared not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke thee. So Michael might fight, but he says, the Lord rebuke you. Then the last mention of Michael, we see here he's archangel, you know, and he fights with the devil about 1440 BC for the body of Moses Revelation 12 7 and there was war in heaven now the reason they say Michael's a warrior angel is because you find him in Daniel he's fighting the prince of Persia he stands up for the people of Israel he's fighting with the devil for the body he's fighting the devil and his angels in Revelation 12 7 fair point but to say he's over a third of the angel you don't know that and to say that's his only job, you don't know that either. So it's a leap. It's a supposition. And there was war in heaven. You might say, well, I, I believe it. Believe it. Can't stop you. But you'd have a tough time proving it from Scripture. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought in his angels. Verse 8 and prevailed not neither was their place found anymore in heaven and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan which deceiveth the whole world he was cast into the earth and his angels his angels were cast out with him so that's why people say he was a chief prince and had angels as well his angels all right so who is michael the archangel first of all we find out he's a chief prince archangel he is over angels. He does fight. He is specifically the angel over Jews and the nation of Israel. Outside of that, that's about all we know. You don't pray to Michael. You pray to Jesus. The Bible talks about in Colossians 2, people vainly puffed up in their fleshly mind, looking into those things that they don't have any knowledge about. When the scripture speaks, speak. When the scripture silent, be silent. And those are the five verses God tells us about Michael. Jesus is God in flesh. He's not Michael in flesh. And so, uh, what's his name mean? Who is like God? I just had that out here. It means, da 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 da. Yeah, who is like God? So obviously he's pointing the way, you know, to God. He's a good angel, but you don't pray to him. And uh, he is specifically for the nation of Israel. And uh, all these people, I'm commanding Michael the archangel. There was somebody got so excited in the spirit of Pentecostal. This has been a few weeks ago now. He was so excited and he's praying and he was like, I'm commanding Michael the archangel even to come. Okay, he can't do that. They hearken in the voice of his word. Why don't you just pray to God and let God send who he wants to send? I think God knows that better than you do. So that's who Michael the archangel is. 
I hope you're not too disappointed. Uh, one day, hopefully, we're all saved and we'll get to see him. That'll be cool. But I kind of think his glory will be drowned out by the one whose glory excels. Jesus Christ, his creator and yours too. God bless. Talk with you later in Jesus' name.